I think the first thing that we really need to work on now is um, beginning uh, the presentation and the live event as we had promised early. Uh, great. Uh, <coughs> I don't know why Tata Taveta, they are trying to, to come up with the link. I wish they should join the already existing um, existing link that we shared about the Arduino, those who are interested in the Arduino. I think this will This will therefore mean that we can continue uh, because apparently I'm seeing there are people uh, who have already attended and therefore we can continue with the whole thing, uh, hoping that others are going to be able to join us on the way. Great, I think uh, about Arduino, uh, we are so excited to share with you the knowledge about uh, real world programming using Arduino as you can see and uh, with Arduino uh, probably we are going to talk about the foundation of the Arduino maybe some of the areas we'll be looking at uh, generally are uh, highlights of uh, what is Arduino how do you deal with Arduino and stuff like that but we'll take you through it's not about an, an, uh, an uh, probably a very strict procedure or a way of doing going through being the first day we are going just to take you in a very flexible manner but it's worth noting uh, a, an amazing statement from one of the people in the tech industry that when you add software and hardware or some things really happen when code and the machines come together and this is the beauty of coding using Arduino because we are bringing two things together one is uh, software and the other one is hardware and this is uh, this is just quite amazing we'll see amazing things will happen during the course of our training because we believe that when software and hardware meet together there's always uh, there's always a beauty there's always magic there's always something very very satisfying at the end of the day great so uh, we'll start Straight away, we're going to our, our first idea is what is Arduino? What is this thing we are calling Arduino? And as I've mentioned, Andy, uh, we are talking about the hardware, but as a physical object that we can be able to see, in most of the cases, they are basically the, the metal or the chip, or you can see electronic boards. So when we talk about Arduino, we'll be talking about the electronic boards that exist. We're also going to talk about the development environment or the software or the area where we're going to do the coding. And we're also going to talk about the various support that we're going to have because when you code, coding is not about you alone. Coding is about something we can collaborate and work together through. Great, so Arduino is about the hardware. Remember that too. Arduino is about developing software or rather coding and uh, Arduino is about the community which support you as you move through. There's a lot of tons and tons of material that we are going to share about Arduino and therefore this one brings us to the hardware part. So what is this thing called Arduino? And uh, whenever we talk about Arduino, this is the common picture that comes in the minds of people because it is the board, the microprocessing board that allows us to be able to probably to add some codes or to code it or to give it instruction to help us solve wonderful problems in the community. Remember coding is about problem solving, it's about collaboration, it's about creativity and it is all about doing what we love so much. So uh, this is what we want to go through, we want to look at this board and we want to talk about the board. Uh, that is what we are probably here uh, to talk about. So uh, simply, what is this thing we are calling Arduino and how does it look like? This is the board we want to discuss uh, during this uh, particular meeting. Uh, if you have uh, time. 
Correct. So let us look at the board keenly. This board, it may be looking like this is the only board we are talking about, but otherwise we have different boards that we have uh, Arduinos, different types of Arduino. They are all called Arduino. So you may, you may think you may only have one kind, the similar one at the corner here, but which is called Uno, but we have Mega, we have Lilypad, we have Arduino BT, Arduino Nano, Arduino Mini, all these are, are used in the different projects. It all based, it is all dependent on what project you want to pick and uh, where do you want to start. So that ensure you know that there are different boards. It's only not only one board that can be used, and it all depends on the project that you people will be picking. If you think you want to do something uh, probably around the clothes that you want probably to, to be able to see, then you'll be able to be using Lilypad. Maybe Mega would want to do things that needs more pins. You can see, as you can see, it has many, 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 many pins. We'll see later how many, how these pins or rather the areas that allows you to put more wires. That is, if you have a project that requires that you do a lot of connection, then you'd want to go for a mega or a bigger uh, version of Arduino. Then think about the nano, which is just so small. Probably your project is just a small thing that you want to really just use to to come up with a project that would use this. So again, I want to repeat that when it comes to Arduino boards, everything depends on your project. So it's all about your project that will give you the flavor once again. We're just talking about the different boards that exist outside there. So there are many, many versions, but they differ on size and probably the power or microcontroller. And again, this should be taken that it only differs based on the project that you want to come up with. Uh, okay, maybe let me take you through again and say, this is like the major ones that are always seen. This is Uno. Uh, at a close range, you can see the Uno here, and at a close range, we can see the the Mega. The Mega one, you can see it's written Mega inside, and then the other one is written Uno, and you can be able to to tell uh, by the by the way you can be able to see that happening. So um, there's the Mega and there's the Uno. So probably. It is good to note that there are different, look at the number of pins. The number of pins are just too many in the mega one and the number of pins are a bit uh, not that many because here you can see all the way the numbering goes up to around 53 pins. But here we are talking about only 13 or yeah, 13. So this one tells you that uh, definitely um, there is a small difference in, in the number of pins that uh, probably we are going to be using in this particular session. Great. Um, maybe now I'll, I'll go straight to the next one uh, that uh, deals. And I think I've said, again, the choice of Arduino that you want to use depends entirely on your project. If you go to the website, and I've, I've been able to pick at least the website here, uh, part of the website I've been able to pick here. It is, again, you'll be able to see the Arduino product and you'll be able to see the UNO, um, the entry level, especially when you're beginning, you'll be able to look at the entry level and the levels are here, the UNO, there's Leonardo, there's 101, there's Explorer, all this, there are so many, you can see there are so many Arduinos that are being used in this particular, uh, they're all found in the website and there are others are, which are being uh, being developed as we are speaking. Great, I think maybe after that, let me now take you straight that Arduino, if you look at it again, uh, it is about, it's a, the board and you can see there are so many pins inside and there are also pins the other side. There, are, in fact, for the mega, there are pins all around and um, this one tells you quite a lot about these uh, pins. Probably I, I may not be able to draw, uh, but I think uh, it is good to note that uh, there are pins that can be used uh, probably 
to let me probably get some point the pen here so that you can be able to see these are the pins i'm talking about and these other pins are here you can see and for the mega you can be able to see these pins there's so many uh pins around here these pins and then you can be able to if you are able to read closely you'll be able to see that there are others which are basically written like uh like analog and the others are written digital so we want to see what is this thing we are calling about analog pin digital pins and and all that but remember everything in arduino we are talking about analog and digital remember when you talk about real world and adding now software and hardware to come up with uh, hardware uh, i mean to come up with something working definitely we'll be talking about analog and digital uh, signals so here we are um as we have talked about the analog let me now talk take, tell, take about these things of input and output so arduino whenever we are doing programming definitely we need to have inputs and the inputs here are probably the commands we are giving it or maybe the signals that are going into arduino or the in whatever thing that Arduino is picking from from probably the environment whenever you're writing a program remember it's all about the commands that are going in and then the impact or the outputs are actually what you want Arduino to do so whatever depending on your projects we'll be very careful to look at uh, the inputs so we'll be able to help you how to to design and program inputs at the same time we are also going to support you in how to design and program output. Like uh, we know that Arduino may be, you may want to do a project around probably farming. Let me give an example of farming. And smart farming, what do you want Arduino to do? Probably to be able to, to, to detect how the, 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 the plants are doing. What is the, the temperature in the, in the planting area? What, what about the humidity in the soil? Think about, anything that probably happens in the in the farm and bring that information as input to arduino then output what do you want to happen if for example the farm is is, is in an enclosed uh, uh, area you may want if it is too hot you want the fan to move on the, the fan to be turned on so that at least the whole thing becomes a bit cold or the temperature is regulated or probably you want an alarm or probably you want the water to be to be irrigated automatically the water to be poured so that the, the, the plants are getting to be watered automatically those are the things we're talking about the output and the input so the input here in this case is the information we are gathering from the farm what is it is it the higher temperature and all that and then the output is what do we do the reaction what can we do whenever this thing really happens so those are the things we we want to see let us all just take it literally like that for now probably later we'll be able to to to, to see it in a different way so we are talking about uh generally the output and probably the input we have talked about that and at least it's very easy it's very very important you really know that the whole concept of programming hardware or real world uh object is to be very keen on ensuring that you capture whatever input goes to the microprocessor and whatever output that comes out and uh, so that you know what actually will happen the activities around it maybe we'll learn a lot as we go this may not really make a lot of sense for now but uh, let me pick the next uh, whatever two so in Arduino board, definitely we are talking about digital and analog input signal and then digital and analog output signal. So you will run a project that re requires that you put input that is digital or do an output that is still digital, probably something that's turning on the light, which is probably digital or turning off the light or putting on the water or making kind of noise louder or softer and stuff like that. So all these things will come to, into your mind when uh, when you see an Arduino in, in, a, in a particular uh, way. 
So, and the whole thing is done. Let us, I want us to go back to the board and see that what really translates and gives meaning to all these things I've been talking about. Probably you put this board inside a smart farm and you are expecting it to receive the digital input, okay? And then this digital input, you want them, uh, you want to use those inputs to do something. When you're doing something, then output is expected to come out. And what really processes all this? What is the power? What is the brain in this board that enables this one to take place? And that is where we are coming up with, you have to really need to know the microcontroller, this long thing. I think maybe in some Arduino format that probably you are going to have in school, as soon as uh, you get this um, object, you may find that this is not the way it is. Probably it is smaller than this long one. Maybe this is too long, but the other ones are probably uh, smaller. But all in all, there is a microcontroller, micro like the brain that processes the input and then uh, brings out the output, the desired output and, and all that. And all this we are going to, they are going to start making sense as we look around. Let us also probably look at the other, the other parts of the board that you may want to be able to see. Remember this more of an overview, an overall overview and, and a very, very a bigger picture. In our, in our upcoming uh, webinars, we are going to go into detail on especially the coding and what really happens. So in the real picture, we can see this is the Arduino. There's the USB port. I think uh, this is where uh, definitely as we are going to learn is where we can power and we are going to use it as a USB to connect to the computer where we're going to write the programs and then upload those programs to the board using the port. Then we have the the controller we talked about the, the microcontroller. This is the one that processes the whole thing, as you can see. Uh, you can see it here. This is the one that processes the whole thing. We talked about that. Then think about um, other things. The, I think we've talked about the pins. So you can see these pins are here. There are all number of pins. There's so many pins here. But particularly, we are looking at, we have just taken these ones that you've seen, the ones that have been indicated in yellow. Those are the digital pin. And they are, they are uh, you can see they are 14 in number because they're starting with zero all the way up to 13. Then we also have um, probably uh, another another thing that I really need to put across. The other, the other pins are on the, other, the opposite side, which are analog, and then we have power pins, and then we have the power input. Probably in the later, later slides, we're going to really show you this in detail. Uh, rate, I think maybe we go to the next, and we'll, we'll be able to see, to pick in probably each and every. I've talked about the USB port. That one is used to upload, uh, when you want to upload um, programs into Arduino, you use it. Sometimes if you don't have uh, the, the software to upload, probably you'll want to use it specifically as the power source for you when you connect it to the computer. So it becomes the power source. Uh, that is the, 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 the USB uh, port. You will see it in, in many, many, in many, many space. Great. The next one is, of course, uh, we want to look at the red there's a button on the board. This is usually for resetting the board in case things are not working. You can reset the board to the default, the way it looks like it is new. Again, there's that reset board. Then another another thing again uh, that you really need to find about in the board. You will also look at the voltage regulator. This one over here is the voltage regulator because you never know the kind of power you are putting in to the Arduino board. But whatever it is, uh, this uh, is the regulator that really checks the voltage coming in. And then we have the power connector. In most cases. Some of your project will require that the Arduino is, is taken away or disconnected from the computer. So you will have to look for a power source. The power source can be the battery 
or you can get it plugged into the wall uh, to get the appropriate power with the appropriate adapter, which I think we'll be able to show um, in further videos. So I think um, that one would be would be good to work with. And then uh, we I think maybe the next one we'll be talking about is the digital inputs, as we've talked about the pins. We've talked about the pins. In the normal UNO, I think this is the one which is in the schools or which you'll be using in your projects, but you're not limited to taking others. Remember, this is for learning and for education. You will uh, you will actually look at all these pins and then they begin with the zero and ends with pin 13. And uh, these are the pins that are called digital pins. So you will plug in uh, uh, baby gadgets or components that are, are digital in nature. And then, but one thing I want to mention that these are just referred to as digital. But you can see even the others that has some small tilde sign on them, they, you can also connect others around them. Great. Um, maybe I think the next one is uh, looking at the analog pins. These are the pins that uh, I use to connect uh, gadgets that require analog. Uh, analog I think maybe it's in the next video I'll be talking about, in the next slide I'll be talking about what analog and uh, probably digital would, would actually uh, represent or mean, I think very, very fast, so that at least you know the digital and analog, the difference between digital and analog things. When we talk about digital, we, we are actually uh, talking about all physical things the ones you can touch outside. They are basically, we calling them analog. It means that it, the, the value is either minimum or maximum. It's either on, I mean, they, they, they have minimum values and they have maximum values. And all along, there are various, various variable uh, values that can, that can be seen uh, all along the way. For example, temperature. When you see, look at temperature, temperature can be either one, two, three, four. So there are many values. When you talk about analog, we're talking about a very, 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 a range of values. But when we talk about digital, we're talking about either two, only two values, either on or off, or uh, we are talking about, uh, we are talking about either on or off or zero and one. And in the, in, the, in the example that I'm putting here that can really give you an example is in the alf alphabet, we only, we only have 26 letters. So there's, there's no letter between A and B. It is either A or B. It's either C or D. We can't have a letter in between. That one has not been there as much as probably we want to have. So that is where the idea of uh, digital comes in. Great, I think maybe these are just again high level introduction to all this but the moment we start working on projects and giving you hands-on uh, we will be able to to show you much about this great uh, probably i'd want to give a break and look at probably some of the questions that you you've really uh shared on on online and then probably i can continue after a break or maybe five minutes then we can look at more aspect of the board because today we just wanted to talk about the board
we are back. Apparently, the question, what is the importance of Arduino? Uh, okay, good. I will be answering that uh, shortly. Thank you, Stacy, for uh, asking uh, such a wonderful question. That is Stacy Masikonde. Um, probably another question that is around here. Um, the importance, I think, what is the function of Arduino and all that? Okay, good. I think that's what you're going to next. At least you have now seen the board. We have known the board mostly, and we are going to take you to that particular level. It's good that you are you're asking such brilliant questions. Uh, good. So uh, we've talked about the different parts. I want to bring uh, your attention to this. There's also another component on the board, which is green LED. There's a light uh, that light emitting diode you'll find it somewhere here. This just to indicate that the Arduino is, on, is powered. It is on, it has power, it's power reaching it. So you'll always be seeing it there when it is okay. Uh, it is there. Then probably uh, we go to the next one, which is basically, uh, you can see the yellow, the, the also light emitting yellow. They, you'll see this yellow thing. This one always happens whenever there's data exchange. Either the data is being exchanged from uh, uh, probably one one item to the other, or maybe the data is coming in, or when you're, whenever you're uploading your your program, which is called Sketch, as we learn later, uh, you will see this 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 lights blinking. They they naturally don't really have to be on all the time, but you see them making some kind of uh, a blink turning on and off uh, immediately to show that data is getting in or there's a bit of communication or taking place. Great. Uh, the next one I think we'll be talking about this other one, other light also, you'll find it uh, here. It is always connected to pin 13. So this pin and this uh, LED are all connected. So you might might always see the two, they are always connected. So this one will be lighting. So if you connect to pin 13, if you are connecting your project and you're connecting on pin number 13 here, definitely know that whatever the thing, if you are connecting maybe an LED to light or something to put on and off, you'll always see the effect on uh, this LED or this lighting emitting diode. If this is particularly put here uh, to work, to indicate to you that probably a pro pro program is working as desired. So you can use it many times to debug or to remove an error from your, uh, your already working program as you are probably designing something or programming something or coding some, some aspect. So this is very important. You can be able to know that. I think maybe somebody has asked about uh, Arduino, why Arduino or what does Arduino do? And uh, there, are, there are definitely things that we can talk about Arduino, uh, that especially the micro micro controller. Where are they also found? Maybe somebody can look at that and uh, see. I I like comparing what is what this chip. This is the brain that is in in the Arduino, and you can see it here. Uh, this is the brain that is in the Arduino. You can always see that, that one there, and let me put uh, whatever. But apparently the same brain that is in Arduino, the one controlling that you can use in Arduino, is also in the robot that you, probably some schools are already having this Lego Mindstorm robot. It is, it is actually inside there. It's the one that also controls the robot. So it means, therefore, whatever you can be doing outside there with the robot, which already has been simplified for you, and given to you in small, but again, very limited. Now you have an open way of doing it right here in, in, in the Arduino. As much as we can see the robot, this other side, these are the robotic uh, things like uh, Lego Mindstone, which is already there. You, some of you have already interacted with it, if it is in your school, but if it's not, uh, you may interact with it. But in most cases, you'll find that Arduino offers more opportunity than what we have because this one is limited to the various parts that has been given. 
But with Arduino, you can use the same brain. It's like now giving you the brain that is inside this robot and putting it open and accessible for you so that you can do anything with it, so that you are not limited to the ability of the components of the, the already, these kinds of robots that are already set up. You can only do up to a certain level of activities. You can only give up to a certain level of commands. But with Arduino, you are open to do anything. And anything here, I mean, it is anything because this is a very powerful chip, and it is, it is the, this, it is, it is, it is very powerful to an extent that uh, probably I'll just try to, as I answer the the question of Stacy, is that it is so powerful to an extent that you can use it in all these areas. It can be used in the agriculture sector, maybe to control the kind of farming. Maybe you see right now we are talking about rain, uh, rain as the only way. Most of the farming are dependent on rain. What about the, with the climate change? Probably there are problem problems. You can decide to automate the watering of plants using Arduino. You can use it in the car industry vehicle to do something to detect probably thieves and stuff like that. Maybe most of the system you see in the cars are made out of. The Arduino construction industry needs it. In the entertainment, you can you cannot say you don't want it there. Probably health care also needs uh, a robotic kind of a thing. So when you're talking about Arduino, definitely you're talking about robotic nature of, of, of doing stuff. It's like a robot, uh, but now you are it's open for you to, to create it. You don't have to give it an exact figure or probably an image of the robot the way we know it, but you, you are free to use it on anything. Household purposes, I don't know, whatever system you want to make in the house, maybe a very smart door or a smart bathroom that cannot probably open the water if the stranger is the one who wants to, to, to take a shower and stuff like that. In the laboratory, we can have them. Think about things, even the airport, security, all this, there is a brain, there is a microchip running to process the information they are given so that the intended uh, things things are put uh, together. So I think maybe we, we have done much and uh, I want to probably take you to uh, maybe the notes which we have shared about Arduino and, and, and it, is, it is important that you get them, some of them. Uh, here, great. Um, maybe this, these are the parts of, of linking and connecting. This is usually a simple way you can be connecting Arduino to other things. You can, you can see now here, we have other components, which we'll be talking about in our next, uh, next, uh, next webinar. We'll be talking about these other components that are found in the Arduino kit, be it the light, be it the resistors, the, the small screen will teach you how to program them so that you are able to get them. And even how to connect them to the Arduino board so that they are connected and they are able to give you the desired uh, uh, program. And I've also shared with, the, with you, and I think this is already in the program, and I think it's already in, the, in, in your I shared with you in Teams different, uh, a lot of information about Arduino and the, what you can do with it because somebody is asking what can you do with Arduino and, and I want to show you just a page, I think it's page 11 in the notes that uh, we, have, we have done. Um, so probably I'll stop sharing this, excuse me, so that I stop sharing this and then I share with you uh, Another one, uh, probably that you'd want to you'd really wish that we share. And let me share with you this. And uh, correct, I think good. It is coming live uh, for you. So you can see here we have an Arduino that can follow you. It's a drone that follows you. You can do LED cube. This one you can get all this information. This notes is already there. Probably a car, sort of the light following robot. Uh, so you are free uh, to use it. Uh, okay. So I will be.
checking on the questions, and there are so many questions. Ah, wow. And now, probably because, because of time and also the questions, I'd rather wish we just have it up to that level of uh, knowing what Arduino is and how do we connect to Arduino and all that. I think that one we should do it in the next uh, webinar where I will be showing you how to really uh, take use of how do you connect all these other components that come in the Arduino kit to the Arduino itself to be able to do simple tasks for you. Meanwhile, let me, let me take this opportunity probably to answer some of the questions that have been said because time is not going to allow us. Uh, by by four will be we, by four thirty we should be should be done. So probably if, if I give fifteen minutes to asking questions and then other fifteen minutes or maybe four five minutes just to wind up to do a summary, it will be good uh, on our side. Great, allow me to go back to the presentation and uh, probably get, I don't know whether we got it right, not, okay. So as I've said, Arduino can be used in all that. Now, let me read this question very quickly for, for all of us to, to get. Uh, maybe I may, be, I may want to put them online so that we can be able to look at them uh, together and probably when we are answering, we are able to, to answer. Let me just... All right, okay. So... Uh, let me get a clean page here. Yeah. So, and, and probably insert um, text so that we, I, I want to try as much as possible to, to address some of this. So question, another uh, question is here, will our project take the type of Arduino we need or all Arduino boards have the same components? Uh, it's a very good question. Yes your project should dictate the kind of Arduino board you need, especially if you need, if it, it can be a very small thing you need, but otherwise what we have recommended, we recommend UNO. UNO has always done everything. I want you also to know that all, all Arduino boards can do everything you want them to do. However, uh, sometimes if your project needs so many connections, then you need a board with so many pin, uh, pins for you to be able to connect. If you are pro program project, probably it's just a small thing that really can be can be can be can be put on a cloth, and then therefore you don't need you don't actually need a whole big thing to be working on. Uh, I wish I had this photo of uh, Arduino on uh, on cloth. So maybe it's just a button. So with a button you need a lily pad. You don't need the whole Uno because Uno is big. So but for your work, you just use UNO, and then now when you want to translate it to the actual, uh, that you really want it out there, then you think about uh, using that. Again, from Robert, because it's, uh, I think this is now from Robert, he says, once the project has been programmed, uh, let me put it here for you to see, it says, okay, once the program has been, uh, let me put bullets so that at least, because these questions are very important. Once the program has been programmed using Arduino, will the project continue working if Arduino is disconnected? Uh, <laughs> Arduino is the one that is running the project because the brain of the Arduino is the one that helps working with Arduino. So definitely, if you want the project, you want now to package your project for the market, then you can either put the whole thing into a, some sort of a package or a, an enclosure. So you can do a plastic enclosure which can be printed in 3D. You design it and it is printed and then you have to put all these things inside because Arduino is the one that's running with it. Uh, or in other, in other way, there are people who use, there are people who use this, uh, I think you've seen the ATM 
mega that was the one i've just been showing you they they pluck it because it's pluckable you can remove it from the uh from that from that place you can remove it from 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 the arduino and and put it aside and now connect those things already once it is programmed you can now use it uh to package so that it becomes lighter but otherwise um you need the brain to run the program for sure you can't do without the arduino uh, running for you the program great okay another question that is coming here where can i get workable projects uh, for mathematics using arduino any link oh yes there are quite a number of links that we are going to share i've shared so many um uh, Uh, I've shared so many, and I think we'll be sharing with the the, the the teachers, and even you. I'll share with you the links. I think maybe these links here are uh, are not probably they, you cannot be able to click them. But I'll put a list of link and uh, share with the teachers, or put them down. If you if you are going to if we put this video on the on the YouTube, we'll have to put all the links. In, under the description space so that you are able to click and just go to those links and, and be able to do. Are light emitting diodes available in the market freely? Yes, there are so many in the, in the market and I think they are costing two to five shillings, maybe two shillings to five shillings per LED. It all depends on where you get them from. Once the project has been programmed, I think that one is answered. Um, then another, where can I get a workable project? That one I've said. Hello, are all the business boards the same? I mean, do they have the same components? In other words, will our project detect the type of light we know we need? I think that one we have said, if you, uh, the power may, may not be the same in all of them, but uh, you will actually need, um, you will need all the type that probably works for you. Uh, in this case, we are talking about uh, i think i've given you examples here of, of different uh arduinos that we are working with there's uno there's mega there's lilypad there's mini there's nano there's bt so think about whichever you want to use and it all depends again on the project lilypad is mostly used when you want to to have it stick your project stick on a cloth or on a material which is a bit fa fabric sort of you need some some small it's a small button so once you program it it goes with it so it depends on your project for sure so you don't need even this mini they are used uh, for something uh, if you find your project uh, can can be run by mini go with it there's no problem i think uh, by the way arduino is equivalent to a 286 computer a whole computer of those days so it is very powerful it can do amazing things uh, when you use it maybe a look at another question what's the function of Arduino I think I've, I've answered that that uh, Arduino basically is used uh, to to help you program hardware or real world come up with projects that are real world in nature and you can do much remember learning how to code using arduino only opens your your career there are so many careers that are around arduino uh, board one is probably electrical engineering that is their engineering itself is around there uh, probably robotics are there things to do with uh, maybe artificial intelligence all this they are all around Arduino boards and definitely the future is so so huge when you are learning how to code Arduino and remember we talk about um, we talk about internet of things and everything nowadays is internet of things and we need people uh, to be able to assist us in the internet of things uh, I don't know why you say you didn't see you're not getting uh but i think maybe i don't know who who is saying that they can't get me okay great
Great. I think maybe that is good. Maybe there's a small technical error for others, but everything from my side looks fine. And I have a team that is confirming that the sound is okay. Uh, the engineer, the sound engineer is confirming to me that the sound is perfect. Great. I think maybe to wind up, because we have like 10 minutes and we'll be stopping, we just to take you back to what we've done. We've actually looked at um, the, the, the Arduino, the board itself, looked at the various parts of it, and for today it's just introduction to Arduino, and I think that was enough. What is Arduino? What do we expect? But remember, all some things happen when Arduino uh, works uh, with, 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 with when, when you add software with, soft, with, with hardware. Uh, probably there, there are even other things that I want probably to show you. Um, let me show you this website. It's called microchip.com. And you can see the amazing things that already uh, Arduino itself is, is doing. And, and we can probably stop sharing this and then I can share with you uh, this other one. And you can see um, the real time things. The vehicles need need that. You need a parking engine. You need that inside inside the car. There's a lot that probably can be done by the, the Arduino chip inside the house from the from the security to the fridge to the lighting. All that can be done. Imagine the fan or movement sensors in the house for the security. You have every other output. Even the brush that we use. Some of the brush can be uh, can be made to brush automatically. So think about the opportunities that you have uh, around Arduino. And, and I think I also wanted probably to share with you this other, this is a big, big community where you can get projects that have been done and you can learn from this, uh, especially those that deal with Arduino, which are, which are so many here. There are so many, so many projects done with Arduino. You can imagine somebody doing an open cut, automation flow cooler, uh, all this IoT based notification system. So you, it's upon you to decide what smart thing do you want to create uh, with Arduino. And you can imagine some, some smart things, Arduino switch. So this, you can even create for the Samsung company. All these people are doing amazing. Now you can even see uh, this guy who's talked about creating a glove that translates sign language into text and speech. So think about that. ECG monitor, uh, all this. So I think Arduino can do tons and tons of things. I, I, had to, I had to show you this because there is that student who wanted to know why Arduino, what can, what can Arduino do? And we have so many projects that are done outside there, which you need just look at them and then customize based on the problem. Remember last week we were talking about problem uh, design and problem identification, and then you ideate and then come up with your own, then you can borrow a lot from here. But we will also teach you how to code different things from input to output. Great. I think the seven, seven minutes are the ones probably I'm remaining with. Uh, if there's any problem, any question, I can be able to answer. But otherwise, you can see this amazing tons and tons of knowledge. And I think this is a small Arduino, Arduino Mini, and it's also doing something. I think they are showing how it is being used. So you you have tons and tons of information to work from. Maybe there's a question, a last question: skills and resource identification. A general overview. Yeah, today it was more of a general overview for sure. There was nothing much. Um, yeah, for Korea from Masai Girl says it's more of a general overview. So what a Arduino board is like and what it can be able to do, you can do everything else. You can build everything, even the ultrasonic uh, side. Anything you want to you want to deal with, you'll be able to get. Uh, here. Great.
Yeah. The questions seemingly okay. There's this lady from Tarumas. Is it possible to set up? Uh, let me read the question. Different timing using Arduino. Yes, it is very possible to set up to set different timing using Arduino because one uh, that is Taruru uh, from Masai girl. Because definitely remember with Arduino we are we are we are able to code it and it's the coding that really determines all the timings and all that. We will be able to instruct them using the code, uh, so it is possible to to do all that with the code, yes. Another question coming in, oh, this is Esther. So Esther, uh, yes, what are you saying, Esther? Say it, <laughs> uh, okay. Great. So I think maybe we have, we have, we have talked about Okay, how do we go about identifying the skills and resources for the project that we want to undertake? Okay, great. I think when you, we have said one, one thing, I think there's a question here that I really need to work on it, uh, to answer very quickly before we, 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 we talk, is that how do we identify the skills and the resources we need for the project we, 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 are, we are about to undertake? I think we said in the other previous webinar that the first thing you need to do, first identify the problem, then you can identify, the, once you identify the problem, then go straight to the, the solution that you are recommending for the problem. Then in, during the abstract level, because I've seen others have already started sending in their briefs or the abstract, this abstract is what is going to be used, particularly with us, to help you work together to see do you have the skills then you can see if at all your program project is about a problem that can be solved by coding using arduino then you start thinking about picking arduino if you want to do a smart home and you're thinking about arduino then you have to start with arduino and when you talk about arduino definitely we will be coming in to help you with the right skill especially for the coding although we will code we'll help you learn how to code general everybody everybody will have to go through uh, the coding skills that we are going to do in our next webinar using Arduino, and then in the others, in the others, in the other sessions, we'll have now a one-to-one -one meeting with your team because based on the problem, the the identify the, the source that you want to, I mean, the solution that you have identified, based on your project, will help you to acquire those skills. Remember, we said it is open. There are others who want to even to use far away from Arduino, they want to build a website. When you want to build a website, maybe you may not need Arduino for the website. You only need another skill, which is coding using HTML and CSS. And therefore the team will just be taken through that. So you don't need to really panic about the skills and the resources needed. And uh, those who want to, I, I'm aware that there are schools that are trying to work around to be able to, they, they don't have links on how to purchase the Arduino kit. I think we are going to link you up with the, the the program. I think the program coordinators are going to link you up with the right sources because most of these things are available and therefore the schools are going to buy, even if it's one kit or two, others are talking about two, others are three, but whatever is available, kindly use what is available based on your project. So don't buy what you don't need, especially once you have identified the problem and the solution, you don't need probably Arduino, but this is a skill you need to learn. In future, it will open so many doors for you because coding robots will be something of the future. If the future will be controlled by automation, automatic car, when you get to the car, the car is smart. Like now you see, get into the car. You can't drive a car if you're not the owner of the car because the, the car may listen to your voice. The car also identify your eyes. The car is always with you. So I think maybe we need to find that. We will follow up and help you get the resources and the skills as per your project. Kindly hand in your abstract. Kindly hand in your your briefs about the projects, and we'll be able to guide you from there. I want to stop there. Saying today, we just wanted to look at the board in its in its uh, overview, very high overview indeed, and then 
inspire you to begin uh, being curious about um, about Arduino. And then the next level will be the next time we'll be talking about how to connect Arduino to the various components that comes with the kit. We'll learn other other things that you can connect to so that you come up with simple projects that we are going to do. One is coding the inputs, then coding the outputs. Those ones, as we have said, input devices and output devices. We will want to see how we can be able to uh, use them. Otherwise, thank you so much for listening, and I'm glad we did this together. Continue asking questions. The video will be available, and the link will be shared for you to be able to listen to this again and again and keep looking at it. Thank you so much, and may God bless. You are free to leave now. Uh, otherwise, the meeting has